Hi, welcome back to the channel. This time I'm going to uh, talk about the data structures in uh, Perl. Especially this uh, presentation will be about uh, scalars. So you can see Padre here, uh, the IDE. This is a development version of it. And uh, the first thing we'll start to do is uh, create a new Perl 5 script. It just has uh, the shebang in it, then the use statements. So Perl ha has uh, three uh, types of uh, data structures, uh, scalars, arrays, and hashes. Uh, scalars can contain either a number or a string, a string single value, or references to one of the complex uh, data structures. But we'll talk about uh, that uh, later on. Uh, each uh, data structure has its own specific uh, sign, uh, what we call sigil which is the uh, first character of the name of the variable. So in scalars you have dollar signs, in arrays you have the add signs, and in hashes, which is also called as uh, dictionaries or lookup tables, um, are the percentage signs. Now we are going to talk about uh, scalars. A uh, variable always starts, a scalar variable always starts with a dollar sign, and then letters and numbers uh, and underscores. So for example, you can have a variable like this, or the, uh, the, uh, a single value, or you can have a, a long name uh, that has a lowercase letters and high uh, uh, and underscores between the, the words, or the you can have the this is a long name uh, this style. Though the Perl community uh, prefers the the, f the former version when you have all lower lowercase names and um, underscores between the variables. Now, because we are using uStrict here, uh, we always have to declare our variables uh, using the my keyword. So uh, I declare my variable my name and put in foo. And then I can print out, sorry, I can print out that variable. So if I press now F5, then it will need first of all to save the script so I just call it script PL uh, and it will uh, open a separate window where it will print out the result foo and just something that uh, Windows does for me. So this is the way we, f we first uh, declare the variable with my and then we assign uh, to this variable a value and then we can print it out. We don't have to assign immediately so we could uh, declare the variable and then later on assign a value. If I run this, I'll get the same result. Normally we prefer the first version, so if uh, the logic of the code uh, allows it, then you should immediately at the declaration time already assign a value. But it, it's not always possible, so there are cases where you have to um, first declare the variable and just later on you can assign a value. Now what happens to a value if uh, when it's not defined, when it's not, uh, it doesn't have a value here. So I just declared it. It it holds a value that's called undef. It's undefined. It's uh, similar to null in uh, it's similar to null in databases, but it's slightly different behavior. So for for example, we can check whether that value that variable has already some other value or if it ha only has undef in it. We can use this uh, the defined keyword, so we can ask whether it's defined, and then print out say defined. Else we say no. And then if I run this code, then you will see no, and then foo. On the other hand, if I take the same code and put it after the assignment as well. Then now you will see that first it's no, then it says it's uh, defined, and then it says it's already uh, the value foo because the printing out of the value was after actually uh, the printing out of the defineness. So you can see that here it's it was still not defined. Here we assigned the value, and here it became defined. We can later on set the value to be undef again. So later on, for example, here we can say name equals to undef and then let me just not copy paste again the, the same code. At this point it value the variable already undef again. Now the variables uh, can contain either numbers or strings. So you can um, 
let's uh, start it again you can declare a variable let's say a x and put it in a string put a string in it and then you can print out the va variable and then you can assign to that same variable a number and then you can print out the variable again and if I run the code then you will see that first it was a string and then it's now it's a number and Perl doesn't care about it Perl doesn't have types uh, connected to these variables and doesn't enforce anything like that so how that then the operators work so in other languages you might you might be used uh, to the fact that uh, different uh, values different variables based on the type of the variables the operators behave differently uh, in Perl the way is around is the opposite way so not the variables not the operands declare uh, decide what uh, the operator will do but the operator will uh, decide how the oper operands the variables behave so let's start with another example and uh, here uh, let's say i have dollar z equals to number three uh, i can just print it out and then i have another variable called uh, uh, let's say y which is equals to 4 and then I also print that out and then what's th what shall we do so let's try to take dollar $z and add $y to it and then also let's try to take dollar $z uh, z I told you z and uh, concatenate dollar $y so that will put together the two values in some way and then the third one is uh, let's say dollar z x dollar y which is the multiplicator or or um, repeat repetitor variable uh, per operator sorry so if i run the code now what i will get here is first of all it prints out the two values three and four then the plus is an addition a numerical addition so it will take the two values the two scalar uh, variables the values of them three and four and add them as numbers then the dot is a concatenation so it takes two strings and it basically it converts the two numbers into two strings and prints out them concatenated three and four or 34 if you look at it as a number and the last one is the repetition so it takes the left hand side the content of dollar z takes it as a string and then uh, repeats it as many num times as you have uh, on the right hand side so because on the left hand side you have the string 3 and on the right hand side you have the number 4 it will have 4 times the character 3 so as you can see the operator is the one that uh, tells the operands how to behave either as numbers or as strings but what happens if uh, one of these are not really numbers so what happens if these are both strings if I run the code now you'll see that the result is the same because Perl automatically converts the numbers to strings and the strings to numbers when necessary when the operator requires it so that's okay and and what happens if only one of them is a uh, string and the other one is a number so let's look at this one what happens in this case I run this code and the same so Perl doesn't care you can it automatically converts uh, or costs if you'd like it uh, the numbers to strings and the strings to numbers whenever it is needed so that's okay in the general case but there are other cases where um, this conversion might not be a hundred percent so what happens if the value here is for example 3.14 is pi so first of all by the way this conversion I, the whole idea is called uh, context or the, the, the reason that uh, uh, Perl is converting the numbers is because Perl has context so we have the numer numerical context and the string context uh, or number context and, and string, string context, context. Yeah. Well, I'll type it here so you don't have to worry about my pronunciation uh, anyway uh, so what happens in this case now you have uh, a number three and the string that uh, is not really convertible to a number directly so what happens now if I run this code 
let's go over this. The first is 3, the number 3 that's uh, printed out, that's okay. Then I get 3.14 is pi, which is just printing out uh, the content of dollar $y. Then uh, I have this warning and the result 6.14. So this warning is there because we are trying to use uh, this string in a numeric context, in an in additional, at line, well, it says 12, yes, in this line. So this is the line, so, you know, we can't see it. Um, sorry. Yeah, so this window. So you can't see this here. Um, this is the string. This is what uh, got converted into a number. So we get a warning. Now this warning you get actually only because you asked for the warning. So it's important to use these warnings. Otherwise it would be silently do something, which might be what you want, but uh, might indicate some kind of a problem. So now it says 3.14 is pi, but in the addition it actually used only the 3.14. So what Perl does is that it takes the left hand side of the string and looks at uh, looks at it and tries to use it as a, use it as a, a number and at the point and this is the space here uh, when it stops understanding it can't convert it to a number then from that point on it will disregard value so for that reason uh, we we used uh, Perl used 3.14 as the value of dollar y in this addition then what you might wonder what happened to dollar y did it get converted or only for the use of this addition. So you can see in this uh, concatenation that here we can we get actually the 3 of from the dollar $z and the 3.14 is pi coming from dollar $y. So you can see that dollar $y didn't change. Dollar $y re is still the same string. And then if you look at the third one, you see that it's dollar $z uh, dollar $y times. Now, you would expect probably that you will see 13.14 times the letter 3, but uh, Perl can't uh, print out, uh, only, it can only work with full, whole numbers so in this case. So it will convert the 3.14 to 3 and then use that for the multiplication, for the uh, repetition. But you don't see the warning again, uh, as you would normally expect. So what, uh, is it because uh, because this operation doesn't gen generate a warning, so let's click here and then comment out uh, comment out the code here and run it again. And now you will see that the warning is on the repetition. So earlier uh, we just didn't see uh, the rep uh, that warning. And why we didn't see? Because there was no warning. And the reason is that at the time here, when the addition when the addition uh, caused uh, Perl to convert the string to the number, then it actually stored that new number in the in a magic place in dollar $y. So from that point on, actually dollar $y had two values, a string value and the number value. And that's for to avoid uh, conversion later on. So when uh, we arrived to this point, uh, to use the repetition operator, Perl didn't have to convert anymore. So there was no reason to give a warning either. So that's uh, how conversion works, and now you can now you know how uh, the conversion works from numbers to strings. So from number to string, it's pretty easy. It's just the same uh, value. So you have a number like three, and if you look at it as a string, then it's just a string, the letter three, uh, the, the digit three. And if you have a number, uh, a string that is a lum number like three point fourteen, if this if you only had this one, right? and we ran this, then I it wouldn't have a warning because that's just a number. But because we have uh, something that's not really a number, then uh, we get a warning. So a couple of issues that we would like to address here more. Uh, one of them is undef. So what happens with undef in the same context? So let's see if, let's say this, this case here, my dollar y and uh, because we know it's undef so I won't going to won't go to print it so now we have a declared a variable called dollar z 
uh, and dollar y we declared but didn't, didn't give it a value. Uh, if now I run and let's uh, comment this out, we don't need it. Uh, now if I run this code, I get uh, two warnings uh, using the initialized, telling me that I'm trying to use initialized value. So this means that dollar y was undef, both in the addition and in the concatenation. Uh, so you can see that um, Perl gives me warnings when I'm trying to use uh, a variable that's undef, either in a numeric context or in a string context. But as you can see, so let's, well, it's a bit difficult to see. The first say is printing out three here, and then this say printing out three again, because dollar $y, although it's undef, in numerical context, it behaves like zero. And in this concatenation, I get three again, because although dollar $y is undef, but in string context, it behaves like the empty string. If you want to make sure that it's still uh, undef, then uh, print defined and uh, else, sorry, that should be say not. Yeah, it shows that I'm old timer here. So I'm running this code. And then you see it's not, it's not defined. So even though uh, Perl was using these variables in both, in the, this variable both in numeric and in string context, it didn't change the variable, it's still undefined. So that's what well, one thing that I wanted to show. The other thing uh, is that some people, probably rightly, uh, don't like this whole idea of these warnings. They prefer hardcore exceptions when something goes wrong or partially wrong. So what they can do is turn the warnings into exceptions. They can write here fatal, fatal, and then say, let's say, all. This will turn every warning into a fatal exception. So if I go here now and uh, let's say, let's put it back this way and run the code. So I get the three, the first printout, the first say here, and then when I'm trying to add the values, it prints, it would print out a warning, but that warning is now a fatal exception, so the script doesn't uh, go any longer. So that's the other thing, if you want to be really extreme in getting exceptions in this case. But what if you want to avoid the whole thing at all? So what if you want to make sure that the, very, the value you got, probably from the user or from the outside world, then it is actually whether that looks like a number before you actually can convert it. So for that you would use a module, use a scalar, scalar util, and that module has a function called looks like number. And then you can use that function and before you actually call this uh, part that needs uh, a number there, so you would say looks like number dollar $z and looks like number dollar $y, right? And only then I would print, I would do this part. So the addition I will do only if these are both uh, numbers. And then I can run this code and there is a syntax error there. So let's see where, it's line 15. It tells me I forgot to close the parentheses. So let's run it again. So now you can see that I have the number three and then I have the result of the concatenation and the defined here, but I don't have an exception. And if I have a value like this here, a value which is really looks like a number and I run it, then in addition to the concatenation here, I also have the addition. So that's it uh, about scalars. And uh, if you're actually wondering if there is operator overloading in Perl, so there is, but it's an advanced topic, so we are not going to address it now. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, was okay so far, and see you next time.